resonance and the Doppler effect. So in this uh, tutorial, we're going to look at two uh, important phenomena that occur with waves. And the first one we'll look at is resonance. So resonance occurs whenever there are oscillations or vibrations or waves and we have a forcing uh, vibration that matches the natural frequency of uh, the vibrations or oscillations or waves that are uh, in, the, in our object or our system. So resonance uh, is like the pumping of a swing. So as long as you match the frequency of the pushing, which with the uh, swinging period of the swing, then each time that you pump, you add energy into the swing. And so the swinging motion gets higher and higher. You have more and more energy. So uh, in acoustic resonance, we have a sound that is of a frequency that matches the natural frequency of uh, an object like a wine glass and in that case the vibrations of the wine glass become larger and larger here's a very nice uh, video uh, demonstrating that jamie vendera is famous for using the sound of his voice to destroy wine glasses they seem to simply explode but what's happening I know the sound waves broke the glass, but I couldn't see how. So I'm going to use our slow motion camera to see what we are missing. Instead of singing, I'm going to use a speaker and a tone generator. I have to find the natural vibrating frequency of the glass. I have to match this tone. So that's the natural frequency that, that uh, when he struck the wine glass. That's it. So he has a loudspeaker this that's is the exact tone to that. make this particular glass vibrate. When the tone is loud enough, the glass will shatter. I can feel the glass shaking, but I can't see it. If I add a straw, then it's more obvious. So what's happening here? The straw gets tossed side to side, but I can't see why. Let's record it while I crank the volume. Okay, so he's using a slow motion camera, high end slow motion camera, in order to see that. The tone is at about. All right, I took 10,000 frames per second, and I took one second. If I were to play back this whole video, it would take eight minutes to get through. Oh, this is amazing. What felt like the whole goblet vibrating is actually the rim bending back and forth 337 times a second, the same rate as the sound waves. If I draw in the sound waves... It... Yeah, so, um, of course, the, that tone is such a high frequency that uh, those vibrations are not visible to the naked eye, but um, it, with the slow motion camera, you can... Uh, see those uh, oscillations and uh, because the energy increased uh, as resonance occurred at some point the glass actually breaks now uh, we can see an example uh, in a much more dramatic fashion of uh, slower oscillations where we can actually visibly uh, see them in the um, resonance that caused the collapse of the first Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Uh, they've built a second Tacoma Narrows Bridge since then, but in 1940, uh, resonance that occurred not because of sound, but because of wind blowing past the bridge. Uh, well, you'll see what happens. So here is the first Tacoma Narrows Bridge. And if you look carefully, uh, you see some uh, oscillating motion. So this uh, motion was observed uh, even just right after opening the bridge. 
So this is in an area where uh, there are substantial winds, but nothing uh, too excessively um, exceptional. Uh, so here's, again, a typical day on the bridge. Uh, of course, people driving on this bridge didn't really care for this, but um, this uh, occurred on any day when there were any winds blowing. And uh, a few months after the bridge opened, uh, there was an unfortunate um, day in which the resonance was uh, particularly tuned. And here we see the violent resonant oscillations produced by the wind blowing past the bridge, creating waves which happen to match the natural vibrations for shaking of the bridge span. Here's someone escaping right before the final collapse of the bridge. Obviously, modern uh, bridge engineering has had to account for this uh, possibility. Um, so. Now, the second uh, important effect is the Doppler effect. And the Doppler effect is uh, an effect on waves when they are produced by a source that is moving towards uh, the um, listener or away from the listener. So, um, so when a source of waves is moving, there's a distortion of the frequency and uh, the wavelengths of the waves. So let, let's watch this, or really listen to this video. There's a approaching fire truck. And, and very noticeably, the pitch is high as the truck is approaching and it, uh, the pitch is low as it's moving away. So when um, the source of sound is moving towards you, the wavelength is shorter and the frequency thus is higher. Uh, when the source of sound is moving away from you, then the wavelengths are stretched out and the frequency is lower. Let's look at another example of that from So you should have heard a variation in the uh, pitch of the buzzer uh, going up and down as uh, sometimes it's moving towards you and sometimes it's moving away from you. And uh, as the buzzer is moving towards you, the waves pile up because they are piling up. They have a shorter wavelength. Shorter wavelength results in a higher frequency. And then when the buzzer is moving away from you, um, the waves are stretched out, longer wavelength, uh, lower frequency. Now, if the source of the waves is moving uh, at least as fast as the waves or faster than the waves, then uh, the form of the waves coming from the source is distorted into uh, this form that we see on the right, which is a cone. And in fact, the edge of the cone where all the different waves uh, pile up uh, their wave fronts is actually a shock front. Uh, now, this is uh, what's heard in a sonic boom. So sonic boom, like with a uh, jet aircraft, as it, as it goes faster than the speed of sound, it um, forms this uh, shock front, which is an intense uh, shock wave, uh, and it's very loud, uh, sonic boom. But this only occurs if the aircraft is traveling at least as fast as the speed of sound. Uh, commercial airliners don't do this, but 
um, say, fighter aircraft uh, can exceed the speed of sound in flight. Uh, another way of producing a shock wave is using a bullwhip. Now, a whip, when uh, the tip of the whip, uh, when the wave that's traveling down the whip reaches the tip, it actually gains speed at, to exceed the speed of sound. Let, let's watch a little bit of this to Hello, listen to. My name is Adam, and I'd like to do a quick little video explaining a whip crack called the flick. The whip I'll be using is an eight foot David Morgan bull whip. Here we go, the flick. So listen. This is what it looks like. Listen to the characteristic crack. Now let's break it down. First so the crack of the bull whip occurs um, again because there's a wave that travels down the length of the whip and it actually gains speed uh, because the whip uh, tapers to a fine point and right at the point that point actually um, when it cracks is traveling faster than the speed of sound and what you hear as the crack is a small sonic boom. Now much less uh, dramatic is when an object is traveling faster than the speed of water waves. Uh, water waves are rather slow and so you don't have to travel very fast to travel faster than water waves and you see that we have the same type of cone that forms in the wake. Uh, a little bit more complicated because the uh, interaction of the uh, object producing the waves and uh, the waves themselves is a little bit more complicated, but nevertheless, it's still a characteristic uh, cone, and that angle of the cone is established by the uh, speed of the moving object. So the slower it is, the larger the angle of that cone. So in uh, summary, resonance occurs when forced vibrations match an object's natural frequency, such as the forced vibrations from the loudspeaker matching the wine glasses uh, natural frequencies. Uh, resonant oscillations may grow exponentially due to the steady synchronized transfer of energy into the vibrating object uh, and that led to the catastrophic failure of the first Tacoma Narrows bridge. Uh, by the Doppler effect, waves coming from a moving object have a different wavelength and frequency than if the uh, object was stationary. And when it is moving towards you, the wavelength is shorter and the resulting frequency is higher. When it's moving away from you, the wavelength is longer and the frequency is lower. So again, these are two important phenomena which commonly occur with waves.